a lovely evening on the island of Sonar. All the engines were busy taking their final trains for the evening, delivering passengers and goods to and from locations. Edward, who just came back from his trip with Winston and Victor, was talking about it with Duke. My Edward, that's amazing that you were able to go with such enterprising engines to the mainland. <laughs> I remember my day, I used to go with old Prince and whatnot. <laughs> Still a preservation. Not to mention our friends, Edward Thomas and Sir Hayden. <laughs> if they ever come here to Soto, that is. <laughs> the other engines have to agree, especially to Myas. <laughs> Scarlowy, meanwhile, was taking his last train for the evening. The last of the passengers boarded his coaches. The guard blew his whistle. All right, old boy, let's show him what we got. And Scarlowy made his way with this train. Scarlowy had a marvelous time down the line. He was puffing along at a good rate. He was trying to make up for lost time after a cow blocked him on the little crossing. His driver and fireman were impressed with the engine. You got this, Scarlowy. Keep it up. You should be there in no time. Keep this going. Scarlowy felt motivated by his crew's speech. It continued accelerating. He puffed over the bridge, past the station, and through the tunnel. The evening was cool, the air was crisp, the coaches were singing their praises, the guard even shined in. All was going well for Scarlowe and his crew, but then it happened. They were just puffing by the sheep field. Then just a little ways outside the rest house, it happened. Something snapped. Oh, the coach's brakes is jammed. It's broken off. The brake shoe was forwarded to the guard. Huh. A coach with no brakes. Hmm. That's no biggie. We can get the strain going in no time, said the driver. You think you have it in them? Oh, I have lots of energy in me. Once the coast was clear, and once they've got proper clearance, Scarlo is able to resume his journey. Scarlowy took his time as he made his way up the hill. With one final effort, Scarlowy made his way with his train to the platform, where Edward was waiting for him. Pastors cheered and celebrated for their engine. Scarlowy felt triumphant, and the coaches congratulated his engine. When the pastors got out, they they celebrated with Scarlowy, taking selfies and whatnot with their crews and whatever. Even some of the coaches were pleased as well. The pastors had left Scarlowy boarded Edward's train. The guard blew his whistle, and Edward made his way to Vickerstown. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt, who was one of the trains that came up Edward's coaches, spoke to Scarlowy. Well done, Scarlowy. You have done very well for me tonight. You've got yourself out of a very nasty situation with that missing break off that coach of yours. <laughs> Don't worry, that coach shall be taken to the works to be repaired. 
and you will have a nice long rest after this. Oh, Scott Lowy was an enterprising engine tonight, sir, said the driver. He was amazing. He managed those coaches no trouble. Scott Lowy felt humbled. He did not know what to say. The fat controller and Sir Tatman had congratulated Scott Lowy and his crew for their efforts. The rest of the evening, Scott Lowy reminisced on his magical adventure with the coaches. The other engines didn't give him a hard time whatsoever, but he knew that he was the most enterprising engine on the island of Sodor.